Welcome to the IPv6 routing demonstration video. This is the third video in a series of four videos about IPv6 routing. In this video, I will show you how to configure static routes and OSPF v3 on AOS CX switches. For our OSPF configuration, we will create just one process and two areas. Area 0 between switches 1, 2 and 3 and area 1 between switch 2 and switch 4. Switch 1 will act as autonomous system border router and switch 2 will act as area border router between areas 0 and 1. Yeah, and now we are ready. Let's jump to switch 1 and create our route to the internet. So let me exit over here. Connect to my switch 1. Okay. Uh, something that I forgot on my first try, my first connection on switch one, I did not enable interface one on two, so I will start by enabling that interface before I forgot. Okay, and now I may create a static route uh, taking me to the internet. In that case, I will create an IPv6 default route, okay? So the syntax is like that. And when I am, I'm creating a static route, I may point to my next hop or to an interface. Since I, I'm creating you know, just a simulation, I will point to my exit interface, like we are used to do on routers. So if we check our IPv6 routing table now, you may see that we have a default route over here pointing to my interface one slash one slash one. Okay, our next step, let's start playing with OSPF v3. For that, I need to enter the router OSPF v3. Oh, yeah, I forgot my process ID. Remember, we may have more than one process ID uh, for different VRFs. In that case, we are working with just one VRF. So I'm going to use just OSPF v3 process one in all my routers. And the first thing that I need to do inside my OSPF process is to configure my router ID. And remember, we are talking about IPv6 where we have uh, 128 bits, you know, of addressing space. Uh, but when we are talking about router ID on OSPF v3, even with IPv6, we're still using a 32 bits route ID. So it looks like uh, IPv4 address, but it's not. So for simplicity, I'm going to use 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.1 for switch 1. 0, 0.0.2 .0 for switch 2 and so on. Okay? And let's create our area 0. We are, we are going to create two areas, area 0 for switch 1, 2, and 3, and area 1 between switch 2 and switch 4. Okay? So right now I have my OSPF process in place. I have my route ID. I created my area. So if I enter a show IP, okay, let's now configure our OSPF process in our interface. So let's first enter in our loopback interface and right here we are going to use the command ipv6 ospf v3 1 which is our process 
area zero. So we are telling our switch to work with the first process of OSPF V3 on area zero on that interface. And we also need to do that on our interface between switch one and switch two, which is interface one slash one slash two. So interface one slash one slash two, IPv6, OSPF V3 one, area zero. Okay, exit, show running. So right now we have our OSPF V3 process in place with a router AG, we have our area zero. We have our OSPF process running on area zero on interface one slash one slash two and interface loopback zero. We don't, we don't have uh, OSPF on the management interface. Of course, because it's out of bench management interface, we are not playing with that. And keep in mind, we have another VRF for that guy. And we are not using OSPF in our uplink to our service provider. Well, because I don't have this kind of relationship with my service provider, I just have a static route over here pointing you know, to my exit. Okay, uh, switch one is ready. Let's jump to switch two. And let's create our router OSPF V3 one. Let's configure our router ID. Remember the first step it's configuring our route ID and create our areas. In that case, since I'm using, uh, I'm configuring right now switch two, I'm going to create two areas. If you remember about our presentation, uh, we have area zero between switches one, two, and three, and area one between switches two and four. Okay. And let me exit over here. Now I need to jump to my out, sorry, to my loopback interface zero, my PV6. OSPF V3, one, area zero on my loopback interface. Okay. Uh, let's enter on the interface one slash one slash two. The same thing over here. Interface one slash one slash three. It's also area zero, but between switch two and switch four, we have area one, which is interface one slash one slash four. So, okay, area one. Something that I don't know if you guys know, uh, if you wanna see something that it's configured on your interface, you don't wanna use, you know, the show run and see thousands of lines. I just wanna see what is Configure on that interface, you may issue the show run current command. So it's going to show just my interface one slash one slash four. But let me check the entire configuration over here. We have our process of OSPF up and running. We have our interface one, two, and three with link local, and the areas are different. You may notice over here. Okay. Great, let's jump to switch three. Okay, the same thing over here. Three. 
interface tree. And we also have interfaces five and six, which I want to advertise to my entire network. So right now we have our OSPF process up here. We have our OSPF process in area on interfaces three, five, six, and look back. Looks great. At last but not least, let's jump to switch four. Okay, router ID. And here we're going to have just area one, remember? Let's enter in our look back to zero. Okay. And we have two interfaces over here. We have interface four and six. Yeah. Okay. OSPF in place. So Let's look if we have learned some routes. As you may see, we learn uh, our prefixes from switch 2, 10 and 11. We also learn the loopback interface from our other routers. Thanks for watching the third video. In the next video, we will see how to configure passive interfaces, route redistribution, and some monitoring and troubleshooting commands.